What's up guys, Dog Polk here, and we're back with another episode of Poker Hands. And today we're going to be taking a look at a hand that was absolutely pivotal in the way the main event played out. Of his own self-image, which is valuable. He didn't, he didn't play a hand for the longest time when he came to the Poker Go feature table yesterday. Raise, 1.6. Insan with a hand to raise. Sue with a hand to raise. Biggest stacks on a collision course here pre flop. Insan involved again. We know that Sue doesn't back down, but Ensign is showing that he's not trying to tangle in big pots. He definitely is preserving his chip stack. You know that Sue is loose and that he can have a wide range of hands here. Mm -hmm. His chips are very much in play, but you just flat here, you can take your tens in position and that's never bad. <coughs> if you ended up four betting, uh, you're kind of turning your tens into a bluff. There is the call. So big pot between the two big stacks, 15.2 million in the middle. We haven't seen a flop. Got two players. Now, before we jump into the hand itself, you got to understand the dynamic. We are 11 left in the World Series of Poker main event. This is the final player before they'll go to the unofficial final table where there's going to be two tables. So tables are about to combine. We're too off getting to final table money. Everyone knows what's at stake. With all that in mind, our hand begins at 400k, 800k blinds with an 800k big blind ante. The action kicks off with the hijack getting out of the way, and then one of the largest stacks left in the event, Ensign raises it up with pocket tens. Now, obviously, this is a great hand. He's going to open it up, but in this spot, uh, you have to understand the dynamic that these bigger stacks are going to be opening very wide and trying to pillage these middling stacks looking to try and ladder pay jumps. The button gets out of the way and now the small buy, who's the other large stack at the table, Sue, looks down at ace-queen. This is a mandatory re-raise situation. Yeah, I know sometimes, hey, once in a while you can mix in a call. You're definitely going to make money with a call, but your hand makes so much more money by re-raising. You get to force a bunch of other hands out. The big blind can't come along for the ride. And then, of course, if your opponent does call, you can put them on a more narrowly defined range. And against that range, you're certainly ahead. You would probably want to play a little more conservative than normal, given that you guys are the big stacks at the table. But this goes both ways. Even though one player can bust here, if the shorter stacked player doubles up, well, that would put significant damage on Ensign. So really, either player could get almost knocked out of the tournament if they lose an all-in here. And so the pressure applies both ways. Now, Timothy Sue decides to go with a bit of a larger size, 6.8 million, and I like this play. You're out of position here, so you want to cut down on those immediate odds for your opponent to be able to flat profitably. And if you go too small, something like 4.55 million, he can call with a lot of Broadway hands, a lot of suited connected hands, and basically all of his pairs as well. So uh, in this spot, by going a little bit larger, you make it a bit tougher for him to call, and you're going to win the pot immediately more often. This is a core concept when you think about out of position versus in position. Let's say that he was on the button inside the small wide. Maybe he'd only go something like 5, 5.2, 5.5 million, right? Because post flop, he'll have the advantage of getting to go last. But given that he is in the blind, you want to go bigger, so you give your opponent a worse price. Back over to Ensign, and really in this spot, you can certainly consider re-raising against shorter stacks, right? If he had... 25, 30, 35 million, you definitely want to consider your options and maybe jam against some opponents. But with these kinds of stacks, just about 100 million chips for both players, you're not really looking to do that. You want to play some post flop. And Ensign agrees, makes the call, and let's take a flop. Ace queen against tens. Oh, wow. What a flop worthy of these stacks, worthy of this moment. 
trouble brewing in seat nine. Top pair, top kicker, Ensign with the set. Six million. Mm, nice Six. little gulp from Hussein. Well, however, Ensign ends up playing this, it looks like he is going to build quite a divide between his stack and the second biggest stack. He is in a position here to really run it up. And this is the opponent that you want to make a set against. He doesn't value his tournament life as much as almost anyone else who's still left. And he's sticky. He's sticky. If he thinks he's the best hand, he will stick chips in. If he thinks he can make you fold, he will stick infinite chips in. So there's just a call. The flop comes queen 10 7. This is a disaster for Sue. He has top pair, top kicker, and he's up against middle set. And look, in these spots, th there are still decisions to make. But you gotta know, when you're the ace queen guy here, you're really gonna get fucked up. There's just no way to spin this. There are some spots in poker that you're just gonna lose a lot of money. I mean, the classic are you know, aces versus kings or set over set. But really, even when you have top pair, top kicker, and if you have pot against a set, you're still gonna lose a lot of money. Now, you still wanna play your best game that you can given that information, but really the point is sometimes you just get coolered. This hand is going to be one of those times. Anyway, Sue now has to decide to better check, and this is a very clear spot to be betting. You wanna build the pot, you have a very strong hand. A lot of weaker hands can call a bet here. Hands like uh, conservatively played ace-king, or ace-jack, or king-jack. Hands like weaker queens, maybe some tens, ace-ten suited, jack-ten suited, ten-nine suited type hands. Maybe some hands like pocket nines, maybe some hands like ace-six suited. Uh, there are a lot of hands here, uh, as well as a lot of straight draws that can be calling here and floating this flop bet. So Sue does decide to bet to the tune of six million, and now the action's back over to Ensign. Uh, it w you can't really go wrong with your set either way. If there was a flusher on board, I definitely think you should be raising most of the time. And even on a rainbow flop, I think you should raise most of the time as well. But I'm a little bit more inclined to trap because I'm a little less worried about my opponent's equity. However, you should mainly be wanting to raise here. Uh, the great thing about tens or, or if you had sevens, for example, in this spot is that when you have those sets and you raise, well, your opponent can still, uh, you know, have a queen a good chunk of the time to pay you off. Whereas if you have top set, let's say Anton had uh, queens here, then it wouldn't really be possible for him to raise and get called down by queen X. He would have to hope his opponent had a hand like aces or kings. You're also going to want to bluff here. It's actually a very attractive spot to raise as a bluff. If you raise here and you have a hand like, let's just say, ace-jack or king-jack or nine-eight, something like that, well, your opponent now has to make a very serious decision. Do I think my opponent's bluffing or not? Am I willing to go the distance here and put my tournament life on the line with a hand like aces or ace-queen? Or do I just make a big lay, lay down assume he's not, assuming he's not bluffing? Uh, that's a tough spot to deal with. So you're going to want to definitely bluff here. And by having some good hands like tens or sevens or queen-ten suited, you can balance out that range of hands. Ensign has other intentions in mind, though, and decides to go ahead and call, and let's take a turn. And it gets better for Hossein. Paired board now. And all the more reason for Timothy Sue to think he might have the best hand here. Sue checks it. Checks. The turn comes another seven. This is a beautiful card for Ensign. Now he now has a full house. He's not worried about any straight drives his opponent can have. And he's only losing to either pocket queens or pocket sevens, both of which are extremely unlikely. At this point, Sue has to decide how likely he's a seven. And I think in this spot, it's not the most likely, particularly given that he made a little bit bigger size pre. The only sevens his opponent might be able to have are hands like ace seven suited or eight seven suited both of which might consider folding in this spot pre-flop given the size and the situation with the stack sizes. 
Because of that, I don't mind a small bet here on the turn or a check. I think both plays are pretty good, and I could see going either way. Sue does decide to go ahead and check, and now over to Ensign. Now, he's got another interesting decision here on the turn. Uh, does he want to bet and build this pot, or does he want to check and give his opponent a chance to catch up to something that's still not going to be good? And this is, you can see what makes this hand so interesting. I think both options here have a lot of merit. Uh, I know we say that a lot on the channel, but you know, if he checks, his opponent might catch it, catch up to something that can pay him off in a big way. If he bets, he might get paid, but then if his opponent has a straight draw or maybe a weak middling hand, well, he's going to have to just check fold. So uh, I, I don't mind either way. And once again, Ensign decides to go with the more passive approach by checking back the turn, and let's take a river. Check, check. Interesting. Pot is not inflated as I thought it might. And that check behind from Ensign could bear fruit right here. This has to be. 15, something like that. $16 Inflation just hit the board. We haven't seen Sue tested yet with a, an opportunity to make a big fold. No Dude. one's really there given right. him any yeah. time we'll, for resistance. We will get that opportunity right here. Would you make it extra big to make it a little suspicious? Yeah, he has to make it look like he has King Jack. <laughs> Ace King, Ace Jack. Wow, most of the yellow going in. Raise. Now, what does Sue see in that opportunity? Danger. 88 million in there right now. The river comes an offsuit six, breaking the backdoor flush draw, but now if either player had eight, nine, they made a straight. Not the most relevant card, but still something important to note nonetheless. Now, in Sue's shoes, what should he do here? Should he be checking again, or should he be betting and going for some value? And I think in this spot is a very clear bet. You can't be scared of monsters in the closet, even if they're there. It's far more likely in this spot Ensign has a hand like a weaker queen or a 10 or pocket nines than a seven or a boat. It's just not very likely. Those hands are probably going to mainly look to bet the turn or raise the flop. So he needs to bet and get some value, which he decides to do here on the river for about 15 million chips. Facing this bet, there are no longer any more streets to trap. Ensign now needs to make his move, but the question is, does he go for a smaller size raise or go for it all? And I can see so many good arguments to make here. You could go for the small raise because your opponent is a little more likely to pay you off. Um, you can go for a bigger raise because then you would want to mix that more with some bluffs. You can bluff more often with a bigger size. You can put him all in because if you were going to bluff, you'd want to put him in a spot for a tournament life. Well, you want to balance it out with some good hands. I can see any one of these strategies being reasonable, but I would say typically in these spots when the board is paired, I lean towards going for the smaller size and looking to occasionally throw in some bluffs. Because of that, I like a size to the tune of something around 40 to 45 million. Ensign uh, agrees here and goes for the 45 million chip size, which seems extremely reasonable. This is the beauty of poker. There are many ways to play hands, and there are many sizes to choose from. You could make good arguments across the board for a lot of sizes here on the river. Um, I usually tend to lean more towards trying to use the bigger sizes when I can because I think that they're a lot more effective and I get to bet with more hands in my range. I talked about this actually in a video I did early on the channel about why bigger bets let you bet more often. But the bottom line is by betting bigger, you now get to bluff more often by giving your opponent worse odds to call. And that's a, uh, that's a part of theory that I think a lot of new players find kind of confusing. Why do you get to bluff more with a bigger size? It's more expensive. Well, the, really, the bottom line is what's the price for my opponent? And by using big sizes, I make my opponent's price less enticing to call, and I can bluff more often.
Anyway, after picking this size, the action back over to Sue, and he's in a really, really terrible spot. These spots are horrible, um, but you need to approach it with, with some logic to try and deduce what you should be doing. So first off, uh, you're going to have some bluffs here. You should bet some hands on the flop, check turn, and then look to bluff the river. Uh, maybe a hand like uh, hand like ace-jack could be a reasonable hand to do to take that kind of line with. Maybe a hand like jack-8 or jack-9 if you check the turn. Um, there are plenty of hands you can think of to bluff with, so those are all going to fold immediately. Now the question is, well, what are your other value bets? And I think it's pretty safe to say that he could bet here with some weaker queens. If he had a hand like king-queen or queen-jack, uh, those hands might be tempted to bet the river as well, especially king-queen. So I do think that there are some worse queens you can consider folding as well. Now he does have a few stronger hands. When it goes, uh, when the turn pairs a seven, he might be trapping this turn with a bunch of hands as well. And he can also have some hands like queen-ten suited that would be uh, much better hands to call with because you'd block these trapped hands like pocket tens. For all of these reasons, I think ace queen is really on the cusp either way. Uh, I think I lean a little bit more towards a call here, given that you could have some worse queens, but I don't hate the idea of folding once in a while. Now, I know there are a lot of people that would say like, oh, well, is this ever a bluff? Is this player ever bluffing? And that's tough to say. I would say most players don't bluff here in the river like this, but then the ones that do do it quite often because it does put your opponent in a scary spot. All in all, I would say that I think he should occasionally call with his ace-queen here, or maybe even mainly call with his ace-queen, but I don't mind getting away from it from time to time. Let's go ahead and see what he decides to do. Uh, again, Sue looking at that chip stack. Like he's... Sorry guys, just give me one second. No problem. <laughs> if I fold, what am I left with? If I call and lose, what am I left with? But if I call and win, So he was just narrowing down what kind of huge hands that Ensign can have and calling such a three bet, such a big three bet pre-flop, you'd expect him to have tens. Same hand as you, ace queen. He could definitely have been getting tricky with kings and aces and played it like this. Would he flat king jack suited? Probably, and ace king, probably. There's a few hands that make sense as bluffs that you could have, but it just would seem so out of character for Ensign to do this as he's been holding those chips and saying, I have a final table stack. I'm going to make this count. Right. Yeah, we were just talking about it before this hand started. He made the oh. call? Oh, a crushing blow! Timothy Sue, and once again, Hossein Ensign is the recipient of a monster pot. And that, my friends, is how you build a stack to win the main event. Thank you for joining me today for Poker Hands, and if you're looking to take your poker game to the next level, I'd recommend checking out UpswingPoker.com.